Hello and welcome to the next workshop 5.1 CFD mixing tank. So this is looking at the mixing tank uh, for ANSYS meshing uh, ready for a CFD uh, simulation. So the objective is to generate a mesh, decompose before sweeping meshing, local sizing, advanced size function, using inflation and also doing some name selections as well. Um, and again here the part files are provided on Moodle so please download them and have them ready. So the first things first is to grab and drop a mesh independent element on its own and we're going to replace the geometry um, from our working directory and the one that we need is going to be called mixing tank.scdoc file. So it's this one here. Open and then double click on the mesh and it should open up. So once it's opened up, make sure um, our units are set to millimeters. If they're not set to millimeters, please um, set them to, sorry, metric meters, uh, not millimeters. Once that's done there, what we can then do is open up the geometry and you can select both of these models um, if you wish. And then where it says um, in the detail of multiple selection graphic properties, if we open this one up here, you can see that you have a transparency. And in the transparency, if you put 0 0.5, um, you'll be able to see more visually what's happening with your model because there's a bit of a transparency applied to this. So once we want to do, we want to plan to make sure that the geometry uh, is consisting of two single body parts, the inner and then the, we've got the rotating, and then we've got the outer, which is more stationary. Uh, the impeller body is complex, so it's going to be tetrahedron maths. And the inflation will be used for the impeller surface only to capture the boundary layer gradients. And the same methods could be applied to the outer body for simplicity. However, let's keep it nice and simple uh, rather than anything else. But it will require slicing operations, which we'll look into in a second. So within the mesh, first things first, to make sure that the physics is correct. So make sure that that's turned to CFD. The value of the um, element size is 1.5 E minus 2. And everything is standard. We want to keep everything else as normal. Uh, we want to capture the curvature. So capture curvature is turned on. So that's good. And uh, we will imply the inflation later on. Um, so generate the mesh. Click on the plus Z. Use your uh, selection plane. Cut straight through the middle. And we should be able to see what's happening inside. Um, or you click on the ISO to see what's going on uh, with your model. So once we can see that there is some aspects of the mesh where there's curvature, it's provided a clear way of seeing this. So we can see that there's a lot more mesh elements on these surfaces due to the curvature, as well as um, the interaction between the two uh, bodies. So to gain some uh, advantages of a hex mesh suite, we'll need to make some simple but important modifications to the geometry. And what that means is we need to be able to split this body into two segments. Now, there's many ways of doing this. We can go into ANSYS Design Modeler, where you can manually split these so we can sweep the appropriate um, bodies. But um, what we'll do is, because I've already provided you the part files, you should be able to go and do this in Design Modeler if you want to. Uh, but if, for the purpose of this, what we're going to do is we're just going to replace the geometry. So file, close meshing. We're going to replace the geometry browse and the one that we're looking for is the sliced mixing tank already. Uh, double click on the mesh and give it a while for it to re-bring in. Okay, so as this comes in, you can see clearly that all the parts have been separated um, and we can see clearly where um, you know we can use the sweep method or not. Now, once you're ready, just press Generate Mesh, and it should regenerate the mesh for you. Um, and because it's set on automatic, um, it would automatically show that these are sweepable. So if you turn on your mesh, you can see that it's swept this using the method. And you can clearly see it's got hex mesh um, where it's sweepable. And then obviously, we've got tech mesh in the center. Now we can modify this a little bit more better to make it a bit more uh, nicer uh, in order to be a bit more uh, accurate in terms of the quality. So 
to do this, we need to use some edge sizing, um, and it's very important that we select the appropriate edges. Um, so we're going to be using a bias function um, to use this. So make sure that we got the edge tool selected. Um, so go to selection plane, turn that off, uh, turn the mesh off, um, go to view, um, and we could. I prefer to work in a wireframe, but this time here, what we can do is select these both um, details. Okay, so because that's that, um, it's fine. <clears throat> Okay, so let's select wireframe, it's much better. Um, and what we're trying to do here is <clears throat> we're going to select some edges. Um, what we can do also um, in the right click on the mesh objective in the outline tree, um, we can clear the generated data because there's already a mesh applied here. And what we want to do is we want to just get rid of that. Um, so clear generated data, press yes. Um, and Set the transparency of the six bodies to 0 0.5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Uh, graphics, um, transparency 0 0.5. And this way now, if you uh, turn it this way, you can physically see the model as well as the edges and everything that's needed. Um, so what we want to do here now is obviously look at um, the edges. So edge, escape. So edge one, edge two, and then we've got the bottom, edge three, edge four. Um, we've got these edges. Uh, what we want to do is insert some local sizing. So um, here. Right click, it won't work. Mesh, right click, insert sizing. And it's got four edges. And the number of divisions we want is 40. So 40 in there. And again, here, we want this to be hard um, and not soft. So the next one here, um, add bias edge sizing to ensure that the um, everything else is fine. So what we can do here is select one body. So for example, we select this body. And then you can right click and say hide all other bodies. So it just shows you this one here. Now with this one, we need to be able to concentrate on a few items. And the items it is, is basically the edges uh, and the directions that we need to know which, where, which way it's going. So if you click on display, you can find an option that says direction uh, and, and just turn this on. Um, and this is basically just showing you the direction of the edges and which way they're actually going. Um, and it's very important that we know these directions. Um, so the next thing what we want to do is select these four edges. One, two, three three, four, and here we're going to put the edge sizing set, so insert sizing, there are four edges, number of division is 30, it's again a hard behavior, and this time I'm going to insert in a bias, and the bias that we want is this one here, and the bias factor is going to be 8. Now, zooming in, you'll see that this one is correct, but this one is not. As you can see, it's going from large to small, what we want is small to large. So same down here, we can see that this one is correct, but this one is not. So these two are going in the wrong direction. So there is an option here for reverse bias. Select this edge and press control and make sure you select this one. Two edges selected, and now we can see that the bias are in the right direction. And that's correct, that's how we need to do. So what we want to do now is show all bodies So and add the name selections uh, to these. So right click, show all bodies, uh, and we have this. And right click on the single body part on the outline tree. So here we've got the single body, this one here, and 
right click on this one and hide all other bodies and what that will do is it will just leave the propeller at the bottom um, stage and if we snap to the plus Z it gives us this kind of view uh, which is good now what we want to do is we want to add the name selections so here if we select um, the faces um, and again go to box select and just create a box around the propeller um, and there we go uh, we've got all that and we can give it a name selection now so N on the keyboard and call it impeller okay and now here obviously we go back to single select um, and what we want to do is here it's very important that sometimes we need to call it the interface inner and um, interface outer but ANSYS can um, also sometimes do this for yourself when it comes to the interfaces so again when it comes to the assessment two of the computer cooling fan we can look into this uh, using different approaches so again single select select this one this one this one N and give it the name um, of interface inner so we have those now the next thing here is we need to be able to see all of our bodies so um, here um, show all bodies and what we want to do is we want to grab the inner surfaces here and give it a name shaft and we also want to um, give the tank a name as well so click on this click on all the limits um, or extend the limits and then n tank okay so we have everything apart from the inner part of the interface section so what we want to do is we want to hide this body we then want to make a selection uh, a slice through um, home look at the selection plane uh, we should already have a selection plane that's correct we've got that there um, I can delete this one put in a new section plane And what we're looking for here is basically this surface inside here. Um, so we've got one, two, three, four. And we want to then name this one um, intersection. So name, and this is interface outer. Okay, so if I select impeller, show all bodies, so show all bodies, we got the impeller, we have the interface inner, we have the shaft, we have the tank, and then we've got the interface outer also as well. So all the name selections done. So now what we want to do is create some name selections for the actual bodies itself. So right click on this one, create name selection, and here obviously we want to call it fluid inner and fluid outer so this is fluid inner and then select all of these create new selection fluid outer so moving on now what we're going to do is we're going to put some face sizing um, and we're going to use a name selection method to do all the face size inside for us so uh, mesh insert um, sizing and it's already set to face so what we're going to do here now is change this one to name selection and name that to uh, the um, impeller and here the element size we're going to change that to 1e to the power of minus 2 so 1e minus 2 and we have that one ready um, and again it's a soft behavior 
and set up the inflation. So the mesh outline here, we've got the mesh. This is the outline, and what we're going to do is we'll go to inflation, and in there we're going to choose um, all faces selection, and here we're going to use the impeller. Okay, uh, smooth transition, leave them out all as default. Um, and what we're going to do is under quality mesh matrix to over orthogonal quality. Um, that as well. So quality mesh matrix. Orthogonal quality. Okay. So once we've done that, we can then under, under the advanced set um, we can the number of CPUs of power parting meshing to the program control um, again here we can control the number of cores to separate the program to do the modeling um, so here if you go into the advanced set um, on here and as you can see, the number of CPUs for parallel programming are program controlled, uh, which is fine. And leave all those. You can change these to the number of CPUs that you want to run parallel. But again, here, um, you know, it's uh, very uh, important that we don't overwork the uh, process of the cars. Obviously, these are your personal laptops and computers. Um, again, however, if you were in the, in the laboratories of the university grounds you can change this to eight as we have eight cores on the processor. So if we just press generate the mesh, and what you will see straight away is that the mesh is a lot more uh, finer, and we can also go to our section plane, uh, turn this on, and you can see that you know um, it's a lot more clearer in terms of the boundaries that are being applied um, and how the mesh has been generated. So we can inspect the mesh um, and look at the qualities, but this is again uh, another way of developing um, a hybrid mesh uh, system uh, using sweeping method. Okay, and we're now ready for the next uh, workshop.